The broadcast is now starting. All attendees are in listen-only mode. We still have a number of people that are coming on to the presentation, so I'm just going to hold on for a second before I start, but welcome everybody. Uh, today's presentation and webinar is all about our radius supply chain control tower solution, and the topic is how to achieve real-time supply chain visibility using unstructured data. Um, during the course of the uh, webinar today, um, I encourage you to put any questions that you might have into the um, questions uh, box, I guess is the right word, um, in the GoToWebinar uh, UI, and we'll make sure to address any of those questions to, as we get towards the end of the, uh, the webinar today. Um, and of course, if you have <clears throat> follow-up, you can email us at the registration that you had, plus of course, we'll follow up with you, you know, after the, the conference or after the webinar um, to make sure that we're addressing, you know, basically any question you might have. So today we're gonna be going through some slides to kind of talk about the concept, and then we'll be actually giving you a demo so you can see it as well. But, but our focus is, is on supply chain visibility, monitoring, and orchestration because we find that there's a lot of companies that are kind of struggling with this. And we think we bring a lot of capabilities to the market for this type of application because Boardwalk Tech has actually been working with large customers across many different application spaces for a number of years. Um, you can see kind of a broad spectrum of companies ranging from Levi's to Broadcom to General Mills. Um, we also do a lot of work with um, some companies in financial services, um, which speaks to the capabilities of the underlying data platform. But for the purposes of our dis discussion today, the areas that we've been working on are planning, collaboration, compliance, and onboarding. Um, but there's been more and more interest in the notion of visibility and monitoring. So that's our focus today is to say, well, what exactly can companies do in order to address this problem? <clears throat> and we think this is a big problem in the marketplace because if you look at the research across Gartner, Bloomberg, you know, all these other people that do the, the types of uh, surveys, 65% of companies say they have a lack of supply chain visibility. Um, and it gets even worse as you go out to your second and third tier supplier. And, and we think that this problem is not getting any easier because today, the other problem besides the lack of visibility from a data perspective is that there's a lot of unstructured data that is very hard to make sense of. So 80% of the data that's out there is unstructured. And this is just continuing to grow. It's getting bigger and bigger and bigger because the data is coming into your systems at an unprecedented rate. Um, if you think about all of the information that flows into your business in order to um, complete an order or to manage a relationship with a contract manufacturer or to do any type of interactions, um, it's, it's getting more and more, it's not getting you know, less. And, and what we see is that this overload of data is disconnected. And we see many companies saying, well, we've got a ton of data and you know, we used to manage it in a data warehouse, but now we've got a data lake, so we're just gonna put everything into a data lake. But this disconnected data is very difficult from a business perspective because it leads to delayed, reactive, and poor decisions. And honestly, what we see is people reacting rather than you know, proactively managing their business. <clears throat> and if you don't address these issues now, especially in the context of a dyna dynamic supply chain, it's very difficult to meet your top line revenue, um, to scale your supply chain, um, customer satisfaction, especially in competitive markets where you're competing against other products that are coming to market, you need to be able to deliver on time and in full. And if you don't, then you end up getting penalties. Um, so we worked with many of our customers that are trying to reduce their penalties for chargebacks and things like that. Um, and then, as I said, moving to be you know, proactive rather than reactive. Because if you do this, then you're gonna be able to you know, make better decisions. And you're also gonna have a much more mature supply chain in terms of being able to you know, manage your business as it continues to grow. So we always ask, you know, our, our clients that we work with to say, you know, how would you characterize your supply chain today? Is it global? Is it outsourced? Um, is it supporting a rapidly growing business? Um, is it rapidly introducing new product lines, right? And <laughs> did it go through a lot of different changes 
during this, what we call the supply chain pandemic era? And do you have people that you're working with outside in terms of channel, OEM, contract manufacturers, or even new models for direct to consumer that are by definition generating a lot of information that right now isn't being managed very well. And in fact, most of the time it's being managed as attachments inside of email. So we see a lot of companies that are trying to focus on the supply chain maturity and struggling with how to manage all of this data and scale it. While at the same time, you know, with all this growth, um, they're trying to make sure that the cost of the business doesn't get worse. Because if you don't have a perfect order or you're shipping something late or you're missing something in your process, then it just takes longer to get products to market than required. So Radius is a new type of capability because it uses unstructured documents and what we call document chaining. And we'll explain this to you during the course of the webinar so you can see it. And machine learning technologies to monitor and optimize your extended supply chain network. So this is really working not only inside your business, but across your extended value chain in order to get your products to market. And what we see is that the, the supply chain visibility is really driven by all of these, what we call planned and unplanned events. And if you think about your business, you've got news coming in about a customer or some issue of getting products to market, or there's some changes in regulations, or you have a new customer that's come on board or a new partner or a new product, or the logistics people are providing you different sets of information. And what happens? You get notified of some type of a critical situation. And that's really, you know, we're focusing on two areas. One is how do you connect and work with all of this data? But very importantly, what do you do or how do you know if something's changed and what should you do? And a lot of systems aren't very good at managing change. So we're focusing on how do you get notified of a critical situation? And today what happens is people have to go and look at all these different systems to try and figure out what's going on, which is a nightmare, right? Because you go log into one logistics provider, or you log into a different one, or you go to this customer portal, you go to this EDI feed, and you're trying to look at all this different data. And then you have to visually correlate that because there's real no effective way to say, well, how are all these documents related to each other? And then very importantly, we believe that a document coming into your business or any information coming to your business generates a cause and effect. In other words, you see that and then you need to do something else. And most times that means you're manually collaborating with all these external partners to say, hey, why is this order short? Or what has happened with this product? Or this order amount is different. And then on top of that, you're, you're just left with manually having to manage all of this because this is so complicated to work across all these different systems that people are effectively left with email and data inside of uh, exchanges for things being sent back as attachments. So what we do is we said, well, what's a different way to take a look at the supply chain view? And for us, it's what we call a document-centric supply chain view. And this is a very important concept, but it's an anchor point of what we're talking about for Radius Control Tower. And our argument is that any interaction in supply chain originates as, as a document. So if your EDI feed out of Oracle sends an order to you, that order may be in an XML format, it can be a JSON package, but it's a document of data. It's a set of data that we consider a document. Likewise, if your customer sends you in a purchase order that's in a PDF, that is a document. And what we find is that as we look at companies, and we've just picked the example of a PO fulfillment process, that there's 25 planned document system events and then unplanned emails and events and a collaboration across eight team members across different organizations. And this is just for a single purchase order. And the real problem is kind of that area in the middle where we're talking about unplanned emails and events because that's the type of data churn, for lack of a better word, that impacts whether your process is going to effectively be executed or not. And we believe that these documents and signals are really the only realistic view in the supply chain. Because if you can't correlate the information, for example, that's coming in from emails, then it's gonna be very difficult for you to 
align that up with information that says, oh, I, this order is at a particular you know, process or this information coming in from my contract manufacturer is at this step. What is the next step that has to happen? Are we aligned? Is it happening as we planned? And is everybody informed? And this is not something that's easily accomplished with conventional approaches because we believe conventional approaches are rigid and expensive and have limited outcomes. And as I said, most approaches today are where people will say, great, you know, I'm just going to put everything in a data lake, you know, and then they kind of, you know, rub their hands and say, great, I'm all set. So what does that mean? You look across your factories, you know, all your different sets of information. And as I mentioned before, the data is coming in as logs, B2B docs, CSV files, emails, um, data from databases, the logins, all types of information. And then what happens? Well, they say, okay, great. We're just going to put a pipeline to this and dump it into a lake, lake where, uh, a lake or a data warehouse. And the belief is at that point that like, well, we're in great shape. You know, we have all of this information in a data lake and we're going to be able to generate some reports and alerts based on that information. But in reality, th this is a very, very complicated process. So for those of you, and there's a lot of you that signed up today that have the right types of titles that know what we're talking about here. There's a high cost of transformation for both time and dollars in order to take this information and to put it inside of these data warehouses or data lakes. And what typically happens is there's a lot of information that's lost as you're doing this modeling. And then as you get into the warehouses, you have to do schema modeling. And then you have to come up with a common data model. And then you have to do you know, fixed queries and you have a lot of rigidity around this. So, so the end result is that you have a very small coverage of data and events. And, and for most customers, even if you get through that, it's very difficult to absorb changes and it's very difficult to add new partners. And as I mentioned before, I mean, your supply chain today is not static. It is constantly changing. So what we found is most companies are simply focusing on the lowest common denominator because there is no control of your partner systems, there's no control of your processes, and it's very difficult to map all these signals and internal systems to a common data model. And people, I mean, we've talked to all of our customers that we're interacting with on this product, and they have spent a lot of time and a lot of money putting information to a data, a data warehouse, and now they've got people writing queries and trying to figure out how to structure the model so they can simply get a report of exactly what has happened in terms of the current transactional data. But it doesn't tell them how they got there, doesn't tell them how it's changed. So it's really kind of lacking the things that you need in order to be able to understand how something's changed. So with the Radius Control Tower, we've taken a, a very different approach. And we said, you know, these are documents and users should be able to interact with this information in what we call their digital workspace. So what happens is, as the documents come in, then they go through a process of what we call our document processing pipeline. And we describe this as words, not data, right? And it, it kind of takes me back to back when uh, Salesforce first started and they had this sign that said, you know, no software. Well, our, our logo is no SQL, because if you have to take a PDF file, an API, uh, a, a XML document, and write all the database connections to all these. Well, first of all, you have to write a database connection to all those, and then you have to write another database connection to go to your common database, and it's basically never ends. But what we say is that, and this is our unique IP, is that we tokenize these words, we group them, and then we timestamp them. So it gives you the ability to work with really any set of information and bring it into what we call a workspace. And a workspace is basically an organizational folder that represents the data you're working with, or the people you're working with or the process you're working with. And you'll see this a little bit more as we you know, get into the demo a little bit later. But then very importantly, all of the information from our perspective that comes into the enterprise generates something else. And, and we have two things. One, we talk about a ripple, which I'll talk about in a second. But this flow is a chain of these documents, right? Because if you think about a purchase order coming in, when a purchase order comes in, well, what's next? I mean, somebody in your organization needs to go in and say, oh, okay, now I have to um, generate a sales order. Oh, and then I need to generate a request from inventory. And then I need to generate 
um, an invoice that needs to be sent out, and then I need to have a bill of lading. Well, how do you manage all of that information today? It, what we find is that it ends up to be a very narrow execution world because people are trying to go inside out, right? So they go from their SAP to their logistics system, and then if they try and go to one partner, maybe they can do it with a couple, but it becomes very rigid. And in our case, we say, well, if we work with these documents as part of a flow, then it kind of effectively becomes your digital twin. So now you're able to look at these documents as they change over time and to generate alerts and insights into the information. And then as the information comes in, to be able to correlate the data. So this is where we're working on the words that are inside the documents so that you as an individual user can intersect and discover common words and unique words. And you can look for something that is specific to your trying to find. Let's say, for example, you're, you want the latest information on a particular order. Well, you can put in that, that order number and then it'll look for all of the documents that have that and present those and how they're correlated to each other. And, and, and more importantly, or very importantly, what is the latest document that has information about that? And then ultimately, from a control tower perspective, it gives you the, the ability to visualize and gain insight in all this information. And then look at these flows that are the digital twins of your standard operating procedure and tell you, where do I have problems? I mean, has this executed according to what we think? And if not, why? Um, and what were the documents that caused the disruption to something being operated or executed against your perfect order? And we believe this is the most logical way to be able to do this because if you're able to do this, then you're making you know, decisions about the data, you're being able to optimize it, gain insight and get analytics. Again, without having to build a database, but actually connecting and correlating information from the raw documents, which we believe is, is the best way to address this. So for us, why we say radius, we say the supply chains are becoming longer, more global, more dynamic, more outsourced and increasingly complex, and that the bird's eye view of your supply chain ensures that all the parts are moving together and performing as expected. And the key distinction is that without having to convert all the documents to a data lake, we're able to work directly with documents and data um, without having to do anything except simply say, hey, bring this information into a workspace and then make it available for me to be able to interact with it. So the value proposition is we look across the entire spectrum of people we're working with is that it's end-to-end -end monitoring and visibility from manufacturing to supply, fulfillment, consumer fulfillment, returns. I mean, all of these operating roles within the business have an interaction with a bunch of different documents in order to say, well, how am I doing on my logistics? Um, what's going on in terms of my production support? Am I, am I actually um, meeting the required output that's for these orders? And are my customers notified on a timely basis that this order is going to be fulfilled and that it's being ordered, it's being shipped in in full? And then, you know, also being able to monitor the compliance of the information that's coming in and saying, you know, does, does this document have something about, you know, Prop 65 or does there have to be a, a certificate and analysis that's being included as part of this order and has that actually been completed as part of this process? And if you do all these things, then we believe you're able to actually exceed your revenue goals. Um, and then very importantly, reduce the penalties and char chargebacks because we see there's so much churn in this that people end up having to go in and for a particular vendor, if they shorted something or they haven't shipped something, then you know there's penalties and chargebacks or you know, you're missing product and not getting it on time. But then the other, important aspect of this environment is that since it's not based on just transactions, but it's based on this information, as it changes over time, you're able to develop vendor trust stores. So you can look at orders across different products, across different vendors, across you know any type of um, topic, document exchange in order to say, well, how am I doing? And then based on this information, um, you're able to 
you know, manage the maturation and optimization of this overall process. So I, I just want to talk through the key capabilities. So you, you, because you'll see some of this as we go through the demo. I want to make sure that it's clear to people as we kind of talk about it. But the the capability of of the Radius supply chain is that it can absorb data in multiple formats. So if you think about all of the the data types that are out there, um, it can be XML, it can be EDA, JSON, CSV databases, you know APIs, email, and again, remember when I mentioned you know basically in the beginning that inside of all of these data elements, which we consider a document, are a bunch of words that need to become actionable as part of your supply chain. So we focus on correlating the words across those documents, right? Because if you think about an order coming in and saying, here's my order number, right? And then you generate something that says, here's my invoice number. I mean, that's, that's a key that now that can be used to correlate ac across a whole set of information based on the documents for you to understand exactly what's going on. And we just think this is a, a much more uh, scalable and logical way to address this problem of supply chain visibility than trying to build a database to connect and understand how this information works, because we just haven't seen that happen. And then super important, the notion that the data is not static. And some people call it orchestration, um, there's a lot of different words that are out there in the market, but we call it a flow. And the flow is simply, you know, we can all, you can almost characterize this as the digital twin of what you need to be happening in terms of your business. But when we work with clients, we say, okay, well, let's let's look at the different documents that you're interacting with, and then let's pick a couple flows that you're running today. So in order for this particular type of chemical or for this particular product or for this particular chain. And and then it's very simple at that point to say, well, how do I then apply that against the documents that interact with that? And if you do this, then you're able to get the end-to-end -end monitoring because the words are used to be able to track all of the transactions across all partners and applications. And then you're able to look inside the document and decide what are the key areas of mismatched values or missed values or proactive warnings to say, hey, this particular document is, it's 75% of the way through, and so this is upcoming, right? Because your, your supply chain is not static. And what we find is that people are just going into these systems, grabbing a set of data, and then it's being left to you to manage the process. And so our system is focused on working with the documents and then giving you this, this is what really is the friction in the business, is where are the delays, what's been skipped, what's not matching, and then please tell me something's going on before it's a problem. And then if you do this, then and actually I'd probably change the, the um, slide order here because you're constantly collaborating with other people internally and externally based on the information you're seeing to see what, what is going on. Hey, I, this is not right. You need to change this or you need to change that. Um, and then very importantly, the, there's an access control capability because if you're sharing, sharing information, for example, with one distribution partner, um, you don't want that information being shared with the other distribution partner, but you need to be able to see a view across your entire channel. Um, so that if you're doing that, then you, know, you can develop the SLA and the partner trust scores. And then also this, this notion of the, the why, right? Because this is what we see, and we hear this famously from a lot of people that have SAP and other systems, that they can look at a data value inside of SAP, but it's very difficult for them to understand, well, how has it changed and why has it changed? Because database technology is static. You can certainly write logs and other things, but it's a, not a natural capability of a database. And we're kind of changing that and saying, if you go the SQL route, you're not going to be able to do this. And then very importantly, the re reports and email notifications, because as things are changing and things are being skipped and mismatched, people need to be aware of that. So the system is able to do all that as part of the data environment. And let's, I just wanna give an example of a customer before we you know, get into the, the demo itself. And the goal for this customer, a big consumer electronics company was perfect order optimization. You know, as you might expect for a consumer electronics company, um, once they receive an order, they need to be able to get this information sent out. 
And in order to do this, they want to be able to a get on time and full. Um, if they don't do that, then they have chargebacks. And as a consumer electronic company with a large volume of orders, if you have a problem with a lot of the orders, then the chargebacks can add up and become pretty significant. Or if there's something wrong with the deliverability of a particular product, then there's a lot of product production support tickets. And what they found is that there was thousands of raw unstructured documents and signals from channel partners, third-party warehouses, logistic partners, internal systems, document gateways, data warehouses. And, and what they faced was monitoring 24 plus fulfillment channels and SLAs. And they spent a year and a half, I think it was a year and a half, but a, a significant amount of time trying to get all of this data into a data lake, but they had a very difficult time um, figuring out you know, exactly how can I make this information actionable. So if you look at this over here on the right, and you'll see this as part of a demo, then you can see for the way we work with something is something comes in and, and there's a shipment notice and there's a shipness notice acknowledgement and then there's an order acknowledgement and then there's a ship notice acknowledgement. I mean, these are all the things that happen in the supply chain. And what we do is we say, well, these documents get applied against a particular flow, which is what you're seeing over here, where you say, okay, well, first the PO comes in, then the acknowledgement, then the ASN, and the, right? So it's kind of a the, the standard operating procedure or the digital twin for exactly what's going on. And then we can look across all the documents that are associated by partner, by product, by order, whatever the slice is, and say, well, how exactly are we doing? I mean, are all the purchase orders on time? How many are delayed? Um, how many have been completed? And then there's an alerting system that's, that's telling the user, depending on how they come in, the exact status of everything they're working with. And all this is done without writing a database or without having to write queries to go look into all these different, different types of documents. So the end result is that full, full supply chain visibility, then they're monitoring, um, alerting, prediction delays, and then automated checkpoints, which we found and they found was a super important area because what they realized is that this, this is kind of the key. All these fulfillment channels and partners it's constantly changing. A new partner's coming on, a new partner's coming off, a new product's coming on, something's changing. And if you don't have a flexible environment, then managing this business as it changes over time really is not something that's going to be scalable. So the other thing, because many of you are probably thinking, hmm, okay, well, all these documents, I mean, how am I gonna be able to manage that? Well, you have the option with Radius to either deploy behind your firewall or in the cloud, but effectively what we're doing is we're looking at these sources of documents, right? Because these are already being generated by your business. There's either PDFs or there's something else. And a lot of times these things are simply being sent as email. And so we have input adapters that looks at these sets of information and brings it into the radius control tower um, with a provisioning system for people to be able to interact with the data. So they're only supposed to see and able to see what they can work with and not with, you know, not what they're supposed to. And then the notification services are communicating back out to everybody to say, what is the status of all of this information as it's moving around in the enterprise? So at this point, I'll go ahead and I'll skip over and I'll do a demo. And um, so this is Unity Central, the Radius control tower. And as I mentioned, you know, basically what we're doing, and I, I'm gonna go ahead and I'm gonna just make sure that my Outlook's running because I'm gonna do something, but you can also see here the integrations and I'll talk about this in a little bit, a, a little bit. but if you go back to the home, there, there's basically, from a user perspective, this is meant to be your, your location for organizing and working with all the information that you have running across the enterprise. And there's a set of alerts that can be coming in based on the documents. There's also an, a chat environment where you're able to interact with all the people that you may be working with. And then there's a mechanism for being able to invite people to say, hey, I wanna be able to have these different people come in and work with this particular process that I'm working on. And then the organization for the data um, is inside what we call workspaces. So if I'm gonna go in here and I'm gonna say, let's take a look at chemical shipping. And then this is a, you know, a process where you're getting information in from different customers. 
So you're getting purchase orders um, or you're getting um, information internally about um, some freight forwarding instructions or other data that's coming in. And all of this information is just kind of organized in the way that it makes sense for you to be able to interact with the data. And at any time you can say, hey, I wanna be able to bring something in. And literally, whether you're just pulling it in through, as I did right here, bring in this data, or whether this information is coming through email, or whether this information is coming through an integration, once it's brought in, it's brought in in its native format, and then all of the information that's inside of the document is now accessible as part of our, what we, you know, the, the database driving Radius Central, which is the words inside of this, this particular document. And what this means is you can go in and you can say, okay, well, this is great. This has just come in, but you know, I'd like to be able to understand how that particular order or how a particular document is being used in, in or what's the current status of it. So if I come in here and I, I paste that that I just did, so this is looking at a particular order, and then I say run a ripple across this, then this is going to look across all of the active information that you have inside of your workspaces and say, how are all these documents related to each other based on the structure that you've set up in your workspace? And how have these documents been managed over time? So if you can see right here, this is the most recent data that was brought in, this document right here, this bill of lading that I just brought up. And without having to go and change anything into any of its other types of formats, the document itself in the words inside of them are presented in the context of this, what we call Ripple, to be able to say, okay, well, what is the latest information? You know, who's generated it and where exactly is it in terms of, you know, how this data has changed over time? Now, I mentioned very importantly that we're always focused on information changing over time. So this Ripple law gives you the ability to go in and say, hey, I wanna look across my universe of information, and I want to be able to, to check for Prop 65 or for this particular order information. I'd like this recurring ripple to be running every Monday, Wednesday, Friday at nine o'clock in the morning. And as it does this, then, then it's looking at the data that's being ingested inside the system. And obviously, this is just producing the same result that I just showed you. But what it's doing is it, it gives you the ability to set alerts against that, to say, hey, across all of this information that I'm working with, um, what has changed and is there something that I should pay attention to? And if you think about this, this is something that, you know, you're, you're killing yourself in email saying, well, wait, did, did, did something new about this order come in or for this particular customer? Um, so as this process is going on, we use this notion of a ripple log to be able to present this information. So you've got the ingesting capability, you have the on-demand ripple. And again, you know, the notion of think about a ripple, if a, if, if a piece of information comes in, we think there's a ripple associated with that that goes across all the other active documents that you have at that particular time. And you wanna be able to find the intersection of all those. So that's what we're giving you in the context of a ripple. Now. The, the other thing is that as these documents come in, they are always aligned with what we call a flow. And a flow, again, as I mentioned, you could think of it as kind of your, your digital twin or your standard operating procedure, but this is where you're going in and saying, you know, all these documents that are coming back and forth between everybody that I'm interacting with. And remember, this is not just internal. This is up and down your value chain, um, across different departments, draft, across different customers. But there's generally a process associated with the information as it's coming in. So in this case, this digital twin or this SOP says, well, the customer purchase order comes in and it comes into this particular location. And then after that, um, something else happens, right? So as the, as the purchase order comes in, then the next step is that the dropship details need to be provided. And you can see here that for the purposes of our demo, we're just having you know two minutes in here, but you can come in and say, well, you know, according to our SOP, um, I can't do anything with this purchase order if I don't have these sales drop details, I can't create the sales order. You know, and how many times does something come in, but it's missing something else and everybody's running around like crazy trying to figure out well, where is this? So we're saying, well, do set up your SOP to say there's a purchase order, then there's a drop ship, 
then there's a sales order, then there's sales order approval, then a purchase order request, sales order acknowledgement, <clears throat> purchase PO, invoicing, certificate of analysis. And as, remember back to that slide, you know, there's a tremendous amount of documents that we find are associated with sharing information across your extended supply chain, tally sheets, packing lists, and all these things are coming in from your logistics partners, your shippers, all those types of things. So there is a perfect order or a perfect SOP that you have that you want to execute against. The question is, is how do you make this work? So this um, flow basically gives you your aspirational view of how you want something to operate. And then an instance shows you exactly how something is happening against a particular order. And again, this is all time-based, right? So if you see this information coming in for the purchase order, and then the sales drop ship details, and then the sales order, and then the sales order approval, and you can see that some of these may be skipped um, because you can set up these steps to be optional, or these, set up, these steps can be set up where they're not optional, and you have to make sure everything is done in order. But effectively, it's now looking at all of this data as it's moving through time and it's saying you know have i received everything and what exactly is the status of everything that i'm working on and as i kind of go down here over time you can see all these arrows are pointing to what's currently active and then at some point you get to the point where this is now an open order you know an open point in in the flow and you can add another step to this or if something happens then it simply just appears as part of it. So if I come over here and I say, let me send this email, and I'm gonna send an email that talks about, you know, an order acknowledgement being sent. And, you know, you set up some type of a connection that says, go look for the information inside a document or inside of an email that has to do with orders or something like that. And then as you do that, then the system will look at that information and say, Okay, so if that data is coming in, then I'd like to be able to see that as part of my flow. And then if I go back to this guy and I say, look at this instance, and I say, you know, scroll down here, the next email that would be brought in is just simply shows up inside of the process. So a new email would come in and says, hey, this is the particular order. And then you can see that this kind of leads into the, the next step that says this has been delayed. And what this actually leads to is kind of an understanding of the entire process of how something's working. So if I go back to my dashboard now and I say, let's take a look at, and actually, actually before I sh show that, let me show you one other thing, because what we find often is that particular um, applications may have a, what we call branches to it, right? So if you have something that you're actually interacting with and you say, hey, I wanna be able to see all of this information over time but um, if i come in and i say for this particular i, mean, I got to go back here and then i got to go here and then i'm going to say for this particular instance and then i say view my branches so you may have information that comes in and as this information comes in it's a multi you know order document then you may be splitting this up and saying, hey, you know, some of this information from this particular order needs to be managed on a different workflow line. And then this flow, you know, manages this data over time, again, with all the skipped and dones and everything else. And then at the end, you know, as it's kind of finished the process, then it comes through and says, okay, now I've completed everything, so now I can invoice them. So you have that capability. But going back to the dashboard, if I say, okay, well, how does this information look over time and i say let's go take a look at that same guy that i just did and i say view these results well well here is for this particular instance that the information that's coming in and it shows you the timeline of all the data that's come in including all the interactions the emails and things like that but then it's also generating alerts for you so it's saying hey this particular um main payment has been completed or the delivery has been completed or it's 70% of it and it's going to be completed or hey something's late or something's been skipped or you know basically whatever the interaction is based on 
the process that you've loaded up. And you can see, you know, we built this demo and the, the system is always keeping track of time. So a lot of things are late now because as you move it through time, it's always keeping track of what's being late. And, and then not only are all these reports being generated inside of here, but you can say, you know, that I wanna be able to send emails out to all sorts of people to say, hey, something's late here or something's late here or what step is it? And who's the person that I'm working with? But what it gives you, as I showed you in that slide for the customer, is basically the ability to come in and say, okay, across my perfect or, or my digital twin, what exactly is happening? You know, how many are on time? How many have generated alerts? How many have been delayed? You know, so at a very basically um, process flow view, you're able to look across everything and say, well, how am I doing? And then super important is learn from this, right? Because what you want to be able to do is look across, you know, all of my active flows that I have going on to say, okay, um, four things that I've been running, um, how am I doing in terms of the information that I'm looking at? And you may see that there's a spike in a particular item and, or, and let me go and I'll actually take a look at this other one because that may be better. Let's see here. And I'll say grab this instance. And then I'll say show this. You know, so here it, there's issues that we found that, you know, the expected time, and obviously in this time scale with 140 days, if you have something that is a couple hours, this is going to be off from a scale perspective. But this will tell you, you know, has there been a spike in the number of documents that have come in? Right, because what happens when something goes wrong, you end up with 100 emails saying there's an issue with this or an issue with that. And if, if the Unity Central is looking at those emails when it's coming in, then it can line them up against these different flows and do two things. One is say, has there been a spike in the number of documents you know, associated with a particular process? And how am I doing relative to my expected time for something versus my average time overall. And then if you take this type of capability and you kind of extend that, you know, across your, your business, and I say, you know, I want to take a look at all of these things and say, view my results. Well, now, you know, in one system, you have the ability to work across all of these different active processes, which are our flows, to say, what exactly is going on? How many documents have come in? How many are on time? How many are delayed? You know, what type of alerts do we have? Um, how's the fulfillment doing? You know, is this particular product being delivered on time? And if there's an issue at any time, so for example, if I go back and I say in this dashboard for here, and I'm scrolled down and it says, hey, you know, there's, there's a particular, you know, issue going on with something where, you know, there's a key mismatch. So this order date that or a shipment date or order quantity is off, then you know, within the environment itself, you have the ability to go in and say, hey, I want to chat with that, with this particular user. And in this user, I can say, you know, we need, of course, I need to be able to type, we need to work on this. And then you can come in and say, well, attach anything. You can attach a query. You can attach a file, you can attach a folder or a space. And then, you know, this information gets sent back and forth as a chat. And again, exactly like with the documents, all of this information is um, managed as a timeline. So you have access to all this information. And as this information changes over time, you're able to interact with it. And so far today, I mean, you've only seen me do the emails, um, but in the context of the different systems. I mean, you're able to work with many different types of integrations. It can be um, any type of a database environment. It can be really anything that's a feed. And as I said, inside of your business today, if you think about the touch points that you have <clears throat> across your um, extended supply chain, then those are documents that are being originated and being sent back and forth between all the different users doing the interactions. And then we, we believe that having all this capability as well as the integration to Outlook will give you the ability to pull this information together. And then also as we extend out and say, well, what are the different types of things that we'd like to do in terms of being able to look at the information, not only in terms of the dashboard as I'm doing here and the reports across all the different sets of information, 
But also you can say, well, you know, how would this look like in the context of a control tower? And in the control tower, you're able to come in and say, you know, for a particular um, flow that I'm working with, you know, as I'm saying, the, the supply team and the, the factory and the logistics goods and warehouses and things like that, you can look at all of the documents as they changed over time and then get an understanding of exactly where those files are over any particular time and exactly the statuses. And then as this continues to grow out for a particular client, you can say, well, what type of information is here? What is the different step that I'm in? So this kind of gives you an overview of all the capabilities from a, a demo perspective. Um, and I, I think I, I've touched on this notion of the control tower and being able to you know, take a look at this information as a chain of events and to organize the information. Um, we talked about the workspaces and the workspaces, again, are where you're able to organize your digital work and catalog all your structured and unstructured data and bring information in really in any format that you want. And then the ripple is what we call the, the Facebook or not, the, the search of tomorrow, right? Because if you do a search today with Google, it, it just gives you everything is just a dump of the information. Whereas in our case with Ripple, you're able to see how this information is changing over time and understand how it's correlated. And then I didn't show this today, but as you think about the things that you want to be able to do in the context of looking at information, you want to be able to compare and correlate documents. So how has the information for these two documents in terms of the delta, what exactly is in between both of them? How has it changed over time? So this is a, a very powerful capability that we're continuing to work on because when you say, you know, I need to say not just a particular word, but I want to be able to look at the connection or the, the delta or compare two documents as they changed over time. These are all things that are possible in the context of the, um, the ripple capability. And then the, this notion of the visibility monitoring and orchestration, right? So this is a key part of the capability of the flow dashboard that says, hey, I need to be able to get complete visibility into the alerting and orchestration across all of this information and what we call the ideal flow or, or in, uh, the digital twin against that and then see how the information works. And then the learning against this, so you're reporting against all the anticipated and unanticipated process steps and delays. And as I mentioned, this was across you know, all of the active um, flows that the person has. And again, it depending on where you are, you may have all of them or you may only have some. But as the commonality uh, draws in between these different ones, then you can share and collaborate and chat in between all these different users as they're doing it. And then, you know, very complex capabilities for being able to do uh, merges and, and, um, and instances and, and splits for the branches of information as it's being brought back and forth across different items. Um, and then this is, you know, kind of a summary of the different areas that we tend to focus on. The product teams, where they're dealing with order issues or delays, um, the order execution finance and product team. I mean, literally it's how are the date, how's the orders being shipped? Um, how do you manage the business exchange across all your partners and all the different documents? And then as this information's you know, flowing, how do you manage that activity? And, and as I said, all of it today from our experience with clients is being done inside of email. And then you know, everybody's focused on getting the execution correctly. And in the case of a consumer product company or really any company, it's what we call perfect order. And then knowing when something's not right. And then the beauty of the system is that since we're working with documents and not data, the analytics are are available just as a byproduct of being able to work with this information. Whereas today, your analytics teams are stuck. They're writing queries against data that's simply a transactional static view of what's going on in your supply chain today, which is why, going back to the beginning of the webinar where we talked about 65% of companies have very limited visibility, it's because it's very hard to try and look across all of the data for your extended supply chain if your approach is to build a database and try and connect all this information together. So I think with that, um, I, I see that we've got questions that have coming in. I, I have my associate Darmet, Darmesh that's on the presentation here. Um, hopefully Darmesh, I'm able to hear you. Are you, yeah, JB, can you hear me? Great, yeah, so do you wanna kind of um, 
I see there's a whole bunch of questions coming in. Do you, do you want to kind of go through some of the questions in the last few minutes yeah. that we have, please? Definitely. So I think some one of the questions that we've gotten today is about how we process documents versus data, like we talked about that, and is in relation to how do we ingest a document, for example, like an XML versus, or a PDF versus how other technologies would do it, right? So I think, JB, as you explained, uh, the radius architecture, other solutions would have to parse through the document and extract out a structure from that document and then map it again against a common data model or schema for you to make sense out of the information versus what we do is we just break down all the words and whatever structure we can derive from the document from an EDI document or a JSON document or a PDF document, we would extract that out and store that and then allow the and then ripple that document into that set of documents you have inside your workspace and then find the connections between that and other information. So it's a very different way of processing unstructured data versus the traditional, more expensive approach that you have out there today. Um, another question that we have is, you know, how can I use your uh, system to uh, reduce production support uh, activities and allow my supply chain to scale? So as you can see, before the velocity came into play in you know, some of our clients, there used to be a challenge in terms of, you know, working with the amount of production tickets that you might have to deal with. So if you have, uh, for example, 22 odd documents, planned documents, plus a few unplanned documents, let's say 30 documents for every PO, and you're processing, let's say, you know, few, few thousand POs every month, and suddenly the scale of signals that you're dealing with is in thousands. Uh, and the team is not able to scale, there's always dropped balls. Uh, and what this system can do is allow the team to be at ease and bring their attention to the criticality in terms of in a proactive manner so that they can deal with it, understand very quickly in a single window what is happening across the whole supply chain and not have to jump around screens to figure things out, right? So the time it takes to resolve the ticket, reduce a reduction in the number of tickets, as a result, an increase in customer satisfaction as you would see with a system like this. Um, another question, JB, that we have is in the area of how does the system help uh, the financial team, for example, in the supply chain? And uh, we find that the people, the roles interacting with the system come from uh, obviously production support, uh, channel management, um, whether it is supply management, procurement teams, but also financial teams who are trying to manage the revenue close, for example, and then the quarter, they're trying to monitor which deals which products would be delivered, how can they recognize revenue effectively. So the core of our system is what we call as provenance. We capture every change with the timestamp. So you are able to very quickly use that to recognize revenue correctly as to what got completed at what time. Uh, and you have a full record of what's happening in the supply chain. In addition to that, we also uh, have machine learning capabilities to predict when a certain order would be, would be delivered based on the history of similar flows or the historical flows in the system. As a result, somebody from finance can very quickly understand what is the expected amount of goods that you would be able to effectively deliver to your clients or things that you would have to, re you would receive in your warehouse that you would have payments against that you would have to plan your financial picture very quickly, right? Very clearly from, and you don't have to ask 50 questions to 50 people to as to what's going on with the supply chain, right? Um, another question that we have is in the area of vendor management. Uh, as we are capturing all the data, the question is all about how do we meet, make sure that a vendor has met an FLA, or how do we make sure, how do we use the data in the system to make some strategic decisions around the supply chain? So as JB was showing you some of the graphs, like you know spikes and the performance analysis, for example, uh, that is a clear comparison between, for example, what is the planned SLA in the supply chain and how is my vendor doing with respect to that supply chain, planned to a digital twin that we, we talked about. So if I, I can go to the dashboard, I can filter the data set to say, okay, you know, filter this data set by a 3PL vendor uh, who is servicing this particular channel, for example, 
and it would show me the expected SLA versus where the delays are or where the spikes are. So I would use that information when I talk to a vendor to say, look, looks like you are dropping the ball on this following signals, for example. As a result, it's impacting me overall in my, in my SLA with respect to my channel partner, right? So you can immediately highlight things. And what you're not seeing right now is a report that we are coming out with, which can compare two different aspects of a supply chain. I can compare, for example, two products, two vendors, uh, two channels, and all of the metrics that you're seeing right now in terms of the delays, uh, the, the alerts, the, the spikes, uh, the so and so forth. Now you can easily compare in the system against any two comparison endpoints. So you can say, I can say this 3PL vendor versus other 3PL vendor, or this product line versus this product line. What are the differences? Well, I got a new product line. How does it compare to my much mature product line? So you can make very strategic decisions against this information set, not just tactical problems like where is my PO, that's all our basic things that you can do. But now you can scale it up to strategic levels in your supply chain, which are the important questions your team is asking you in this economic stage that we are in. What do I, which vendor do I keep? Where do I, what do I need to fix to fix my bottom line? What do I need to fix to reduce my chargebacks, right? How to improve my, or what do I need to do to improve my delivery timelines, for example? or things like that you can easily address, for example, uh, with all the questions that you can ask the system, right? Um, one other last question, JB, that we have is, uh, when I have a lot of information in my data lake, and how would you be able to bring all that information into RADIUS, right? And JB talked about the idea of the RADIUS architecture, where we are able to absorb data from um, files, CSV files, PDF files, EDI, JSON. We can also plug directly into your databases, uh, into your data lakes, into your data warehouses, and pull all that information into, into our system in the form of words and ripples, right? And once we bring that information in, it, in we treat it the same way, whether it comes from a PDF or a database, or an email, we treat all the information equally. That gives you a lot of power as a user to interact with that information, to understand the connections between those data sets. So if I drop an email into my workspace and it ripples into a database record from Oracle Fusion or a document from SAP IDOC or in a, a JSON document from a vendor, right? All of those signals are connected and shown to you as a user. You don't have to run through five systems to figure out all the connections, right? So hopefully that, that addresses uh, all the questions that we have, JB, in the system today. You know? That's great. Thanks, Dharmesh. Um, well, you know, we always like to give people a little bit of time back, and I see that it's um, 11.57, so we'll give everybody an extra three minutes back into their day. Um, as I said in the beginning, we encourage you, if you have any um, follow-up questions based on what you've seen today, then please reach out to us. Um, we can also make the recording available because um, we had a lot of people on today. We also have some other people who have said we couldn't make it, so they want to be able to look at that. Um, we'll be reaching out to you to follow up afterwards to make sure that, as appropriate, um, you can see that. And then, of course, we'd love to schedule a live discussion with any and all of you. Um, and then finally, uh, we're going to be at the Gartner Supply Chain Show in a couple weeks. So if anybody is going down to that event, um, we have some very interesting, we obviously are going to be showing everything you saw today, but we're also going to be talking about a customer example, which will be very exciting uh, at the event itself and one of the showcase theaters. So if you know of anyone at your organization or if you're going, um, stop by and say hi and see us in the booth. So that's it for today's webinar. Thank you everybody for attending. Um, on behalf of Dharmesh and the rest of the crew here at Boardwalk Tech, I'm JB. Um, thanks and we'll, uh, we'll be in touch with everybody soon. Have a good day.